Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Keep praising Jesus, looking upon him, gazing at him, who loves you so much with an inexhaustible love. Jesus, we thank you for bringing us here together at the beginning of the month of October, a month dedicated to the rosary, a time of prayer, praying as a family, praying and honoring finally you and you alone. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. May the name of Jesus be praised, glorified, honored, and adored today and forever in my home and everywhere. My dear friends, we have gathered here for this half hour to be in the presence of the Lord, to just be here to praise and glorify Him. Today, I will share with you something about the sign of the cross, that most powerful sign that we have as Catholics. First, a beautiful reading from the Bible. The reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 to 11. Jesus was humble and walked the path of obedience all the way to his death, his death on the cross. For this reason God raised him to the highest place above and gave him the name that is greater than any other name. And so in honor of the name of Jesus all beings in heaven and on earth and in the world below will fall on their knees and all will openly proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. My dear friends, there is this one sign that identifies us as Christians anywhere in the world. As soon as you make the sign of the cross, they will tell you, you must be a Catholic, anyone. It's a clear sign that identifies us. And the sign that gives us hope and the sign that creates a kind of bonding and fellowship. There is a story told, you may have heard it before, during 1945, this is in Germany, when the Americans now came into Germany and they were trying to take over village by village. And in one village, there were still about 20 German soldiers in hiding and so the Americans were with the artillery shooting away. The next morning, the parish priest brought out a white flag of peace. And then he told the American soldiers that we have told the Germans, 20 of them, to surrender. Because now there was no hope. And then the American soldiers started walking into each house, searching for these 20 soldiers or to see if there were any others. 
And when they came to this one home, the family over there was terrified. But when the soldiers, there were four of them, came in front of the altar, they bowed down and made the sign of the cross. And in that one instant, this family was at complete peace because they identified them now as Catholics, just as they were. My dear friends, the sign of the cross, which we make so often, so easily, and quite often, quite obviously, without thinking much, and yet it's such a powerful sign, because it tells us so much about our faith. Let me explain it to you very brief briefly. The sign of the cross, first of all, is a reminder of our baptism. Remember, when a child is baptized and you also, you were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So whenever you make the sign of the cross, remember that you are a baptized Christian. You are baptized in His name, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. That's the first reason why we make the sign of the cross. A reminder that now we have surrendered our lives completely. We have been dipped into the water, immersed into the water and come out a new creation. The second reason of the sign of the cross is it's a sign of discipleship. You belong to Jesus. You know, <clears throat> sheep, cattle, they all have a seal marked on them. And so people can identify by the certain sign who, which sheep belongs to which shepherd. And that is exactly the word for sign of the cross is a word for seal. You are signed with his sign, the sign of the cross. And the word in Greek for sign and slave, servant, is the same word. You are a disciple but also a servant for the Lord. So, first is a reminder of your baptism. Second, it is a reminder that you are a disciple. The third is, it's to ward off all evil. With that sign of the cross, as scripture tells us, all evil flees. And you can ask people, who, even who deal in exorcism, who will tell you when they make the sign of the cross, what happens? There's a tremendous power that's released when the sign of the cross is made. The evil one hates that sign. And therefore also the fathers of the church and teachers in the spiritual life tell, tell us, whenever you are tempted, make the sign of the cross. Make the sign of the cross. And you see the effect it has on you. So a sign of your baptism, a sign of your discipleship, to ward off evil and all kind of temptation. Let me read to you something from the Catechism of the Catholic Church about the sign of the cross. This is Catechism number 2157. It says, The Christian begins his day, his prayer, and his activities with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The baptized person dedicates the day to the glory of God and calls on the Savior's grace which lets him act in the Spirit as a child of the Father. The sign of the cross strengthens us in temptations and difficulties. What I just said. So what do we see here? The sign of the cross, when do we make it? As soon as you get up in the morning, as it said over there, at the beginning of the day, get up and make the sign of the cross. A reminder of your baptism, a reminder that you're a disciple and warding off all evil during the day. And the night before going to sleep, once again, sign of the cross. When you go to sleep, a reminder of your baptism, a reminder of your discipleship, you belong to Jesus, and warding of all evil of the night. Before your meals, before an exam or any activity, before an interview, make the sign of the cross. 
and you see that simple gesture will have its effect on you a little by little and you will be transformed more and more into a true disciple of Jesus. Let us now sing the hymn together. We are here to praise you as we focus upon our Lord.
we shall now bring our intentions before the Lord. First of all, we bring our intentions, the Pope's intention for this month of October. Missionary disciples, we pray that every baptized person may be engaged in evangelization available to the mission by being witnesses of a life that has the flavor of the gospel. Let us now bring our own personal intentions for our families, for our parish, for anyone who has asked for prayers. Jesus, you have said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Through the intercession of Mother Mary and Saint Joseph, I bring my petition. You mention it. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus, you have said, if you ask anything of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. To the intercession of Mother Mary and Saint Joseph, I bring my petition. Mention it in silence. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus, you have said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. To the intercession of Mother Mary and Saint Joseph, I bring my petition. I mention it in silence. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen shall now have the benediction. This wonderful sacrament has left us a memorial of your passion. Grant, we implore you, that we may so venerate the sacred mysteries of your body and blood as always to be conscious of the fruit of your redemption, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be your holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God and his, angel, and his angels and his saints. We shall now play the hymn or sacrament. <laughs> 